Let's say you've got about $40,000 burning a hole in your pocket and you're thinking about the new Nissan Z versus the GR86. Let's see which one is the better choice. So the big question in my mind is, should you stretch for the Z and spend mid 40s or should you be more economical and go with the GR86, which you can get out the door in California with no ADM dealer markup for about $36,000. Let's start with the base Nissan Z. It's $40,000, but you got to add in destination fee of $1,025. So you're looking at about $41,000 before tax, licensing, and fees. And if we look at the GR86 Premium Edition, there's two of them. The Premium is the upper level. That's about $32,000, including destination. And obviously the form factor is a little bit different too. So the Z is a two-door hatchback. Not a lot of space in there, whereas the GR86 is two doors, but it does have four seats. And even though the cargo space is apparently similar on paper, in reality, the GR86 is way more useful in terms of cargo space. You can actually fit four tires back there in the top car, so you can go to a track day and bring four spare tires with you. That's actually an intentional design. Whereas the uh, Z has got a fairly small hatch. It's about 6.9 cubic feet. So let's go for a little drive in my Supra, which is an entirely different beast than either of those two, although it is definitely a lot closer to the Z. So let's actually start out with the Z and let's talk about horsepower. If you love horsepower, as I do, there's really no choice for you. You're definitely gonna go with the Z because we're talking about 400 horsepower and 350 pound-feet of torque. That is way more than the GR86, which has 228 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque. So huge difference, kind of night and day in terms of power. But we need to do, talk about power to weight ratio also. The Z weighs anywhere from about 3,500 to 3,600 pounds, depending on the configuration and if you get the automatic versus the manual transmission. Whereas the GR86 is about 2,800 and change for the vehicle with the manual transmission, a little bit higher if you get the automatic. So there's a pretty huge difference in the weight. So the power to weight ratio for the Z is around nine pounds per horsepower, whereas in the GR86, it's around 12.3. And that's a pretty big difference, there's no question. They both have manual transmissions. They're both pretty good. I think the GR86 is actually a superb manual transmission. It's one of the best I've used, especially in this category. And they've actually done some revisions to it for the new version, so it is actually better than the last version of the GR86, or rather the 86. It's very, very good. Now the manual transmission of the Z, I know it's getting a lot of accolades. People seem to like it. I think it's okay. I don't think it's that great, to be honest with you. Maybe it's the version of the car that I drove, but let's compare the automatic transmissions. So in the Z, you've got a, a nine-speed JATCO unit, which they've been using for a while. It's a Mercedes-based unit, and it is not the pinnacle of an amazing automatic transmission. It's, it's okay. Uh, whereas in the GR86, you've got a six-speed automatic transmission. It is much better than it was in the last generation. It's usable. If you're gonna take it to the track, you could actually do it. It's fairly responsive to the paddles, uh, but on downshifts, upshifts is a little bit slow. It's nothing like the ZF transmission in the Supra. The ZF transmission in the Supra is worlds better than the Z, but we're not talking about that. We're not stretching to $50,000, $60,000. We're talking about staying in the $40,000 price range. Now the body structure, in the 8.6 is really, really stiff. And the body structure in the Z is probably not as stiff, although they've done an impressive amount of work in it. But remember, it is still an older body structure. And if that doesn't bother you, then hey, not that big a deal. It is relatively stiff. In terms of noise level, they're actually both pretty similar. You're hearing the squealing right now. That's because I've got racing brake pads on my Supra. That's kind of the way I roll. When I go to the track, I wanna make sure I'm gonna be able to stop. I use a counter space garage pads, by the way. But sort of back to, let's talk about brakes for a second in both of these vehicles. So in the base Z, I think the vehicle is probably kind of under braked if you're going to go for any sort of really serious performance applications. It's got a 12.6 inch two piston rotor up front, a little bit smaller in the back. And in the 8.6, you've got a carryover uh, system for your brakes 
and it's an 11.6 uh, rotor size. So it's about an inch smaller. And if you're just gonna be doing track usage and you're gonna keep the stock power, I think you're gonna be pretty good with uh, some pads and fluids. Again, I'm gonna recommend the CSG, the Counter Space Garage pads, because I've used them a lot and they really are quite good on track. And in the Z, if you're gonna be doing anything serious, you probably wanna go ahead and upgrade the rotors to something bigger because 400 horsepower is a lot and the car is relatively heavy once you get up to speed. If you're doing repeat at hard stops, that brake system is just not gonna be good enough for track use. And look, both of these are pure sports cars. The Z is sort of a not much of a compromise. Basically, it's just sort of a weekend car or it's sort of a second car. If you don't need to carry around a lot of stuff, you can probably get away with it. If you're single or you're just a couple, but if you've got a kid or you've not, you've got stuff to haul around on a regular basis, it's really not that practical. Whereas the GR86 is more practical. It's got a fairly small back seat, but you can fold it down. And even though you don't have a ton of cargo space, you can actually easily fit a person in the back of the 86. It's got a little bit less space than the previous generation because they stiffened up the, the frame a little bit, but it is a, you know, it could be your only vehicle. And let's sort of get back to the point of how much are you really going to spend on both of these cars. Let's pull over, let's talk about that for a second. I ran a poll on my last video asking what you thought was the better $40,000 sports car, the Honda Civic Type R or the Nissan Z. And it was a pretty interesting poll. People actually preferred the Z. But what was really interesting, I said for $48,000, tax license, everything all in. And a few people commented that like, how do you get to $48,000? Well, it's really not that difficult. Let me show you, actually, the Z configurator is now online. So let's build our own Z. This is the Nissan Sport 6-speed manual. You can see it starts at $39,990, but you, of course, you need to add destination on that. They've got some uh, loan offers for you there. So let's start with the paint color. This is the one of the free paint colors. So you can see it went up to $41,015 here in the bottom left of that. So it looks like uh, gray, black, and this rosewood metallic are all free colors, quote unquote. If you get into any of these two-tone colors, now you start paying $1,300. And I think the most expensive one is this uh, two-tone two passion red tricoat, tri tri super black for $1,700. Here's this Ikazuchi yellow. Let's pick this color because I like it. We're just gonna add a little bit here. Now in the interior, basically just got graphite cloth. That's the only choice you've got right now. And you can add a couple of things like lighting. So let's say I wanted to add some interior accent lighting for $450. But let's say I wanted to add a, um, a security impact sensor. All right, so I guess that's part of the alarm, $125. And remember, you're gonna get these off the lot. You're probably not gonna be able to order exactly what you want. So you're probably gonna end up with something that is not quite base price. So anyways, with a very, very light configuration here, Looks like I got this up to $43,000. So it's very easy to get up above and beyond that. So you can see that if you add just a couple of options or if you live in a state with more expensive licensing and taxes like California, for example, and Colorado actually has some really, really high GMV fees too. It's not that difficult to get to $48,000 in California. The Z that I configured, the base one with no options at all, was 45.5 after tax, licensing, and fees. $40,000 really starts at $41,000 with destination. Things get expensive pretty quickly, and we're not even talking about potential dealer markup. But let me tell you my technique for avoiding that. Look, it's really nothing more than just a bunch of hard work and patience. Let me explain. So most dealers in the U.S., in fact, 80% of dealers are charging markup right now on cars. Used cars are going for ridiculous prices too, but on new cars, people are paying an average of, I forget what the actual number is, but it's a couple grand over MSRP. Now, I don't want to pay that, but you've got to be pretty patient. So here's what I do. I've never paid over MSRP on any car ever, including before and during the whole COVID time. And look, I know Toyota doesn't actually let you custom order a vehicle, but I did put a deposit on a GR86, which should be coming in pretty soon. I'll reveal some more details about that shortly. It's gonna be my daily and track car. And I also managed to get this for MSRP. And 
Again, you're gonna ask how. What I do is I pull up Google Maps and I go to a particular state and I type in Toyota dealer and it's gonna give me a list of all the dealers on the side of the page. Then what I do is I just go down through that list and I click them and I call. Right, first I look at their inventory and I see what they're asking and then I just call them and say, hey, is the car available? Now it's been a very, very difficult car to get a hold of the GR86 because they've only produced somewhere around five to 6,000 of them at this point for the 2022 model year. So you've got to be patient, but I put in an order, put a reservation in at a dealer who does not charge markup, and I put that reservation in maybe like nine, 10 months ago, something like that. And I'm now getting the car, I'm gonna get into some MSRP. So it is possible to do, but you've gotta be patient and you can't expect instant results. And you've just gotta do a bunch of legwork and that's basically, that's it. So if you're gonna be going to the track, in my mind, there's really no question because going to the track is super expensive. This is not an inexpensive car to track with, especially when you consider the fuel costs. So it's just gonna be the GR86. And here's why. You've got relatively low power, you've got relatively light weight. So you're not gonna be using a lot of fuel, which is a very expensive cost. You're not gonna be going through a lot of tires because the car has just less weight to push around. You're just putting less abuse on the tires for most people. And your brakes are gonna last a lot long, longer too. And those are your big costs for track days. But the base Z is gonna cost you a fortune to take to the track because a, the brakes aren't that big. So you're gonna have to upgrade your brakes. You're probably gonna have to move up to the Brembo kit or some aftermarket kit. It's gonna use a lot of fuel. There are fuel starve issues actually, because this one has fuel starve issues too at high G loads, because there's only a pickup in the fuel tank on one side. And also you're just gonna go through a lot more brakes and tires and you have to do some upgrades on the Z to really make it track ready just going to cost you a lot of money you're going to bring it up to the price of a premium very very quickly to go tracking on the z and there's no lsd you need to install that too yeah we're talking probably about ten thousand dollars to get it ready to go to the track at a level where the uh, performance version is and even that you're gonna have to do some upgrades too so it's gonna be a lot more expensive so the base z comes with 19 inch wheels and tires they're 245 front and back that's called a square setup when you have the same size front and back like i do here and the gr86 you've got 40 inch 215 40r 18s on the premium you get 17s on the base version and they're not the widest tire but there isn't a lot of weight so it's actually there's a fair bit of grip in the vehicle and car and driver measured the lateral grip at 0 0.98, 0 0.97, something like that. Quite a bit of lateral grip. Now the GR86 has a Torsen limited slip differential on both models, whereas on the Z, if you want to get the limited slip, which you probably really want if you want performance, that's going to be $10,000 more. We're talking about no limited slip on the base Z. So I've driven both of them, not back to back. I can tell you the GR86 is excellent on track. The Z apparently is pretty decent on track, but you probably wanna do some upgrades to it in terms of stiffening up the suspension. It's got a little bit of softness to it. I think they both drive pretty well for what they are. I would say the GR86 is probably more of a dedicated driver's car. Again, we are talking about a big power difference here, and we're also talking about a $10,000 difference. Man, I wish I had brought my sunglasses that's super bright out here. So the big question is, GR86 versus Nissan Z. So we got some pretty big differences. Obviously the Z at that price point does not have a limited slip differential. It has way more horsepower. It's way more tunable. The GR86 right now with the current ECU, it is locked. You cannot tune it. You cannot add more power right now. I suspect they're gonna be able to fix that or crack the ECU at some point, but there's no guarantees because on the current generation Supra, anything with the build date after about uh, June 6th of 2020, ECU has not been cracked, so it's very expensive to get more power from that. And the GR86 obviously is not a turbo car, so even once you do get the ECU cracked, you're not gonna get a lot of power unless you add a turbo. So now we're talking about adding thousands of dollars and to bring that car up to the base price point of a Z, you're gonna be looking at a fairly similar dollar number. So it kind of boils down to what you're into, what your intent is. Yeah, the, uh, the Z at $40,000 is really about 45 out the door and you're getting a lot more power, but 
you don't really get all the stuff that the Z Premium does, which really competes with this. Let me know in the comments what you think is the best car for about $40,000. Yes, I know there's a $10,000 difference between them, and yes, I know there potentially is gonna be dealer markup, but let me know your thoughts. My name is Eric. Thanks so much for watching. There's another video on screen. Go ahead, click that. See you in the next one.